Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and uh, this is going to be a little video. Uh, let it be an addendum to the last 10 that I did on the building of this uh, oscillating engine. And this video will be a tutorial on uh, how uh, the valving uh, of this engine works. Uh, a couple of people asked me questions about this, and maybe I wasn't too clear on it. It's, it is really simple, but I did make up a teaching aid here. And uh, I'm going to show you how the valving works with that. And it's pretty much the same with all uh, wobbler engines, whether they're uh, little ones or uh, big ones. And uh, these engines are all what we call double acting. That is, uh, we have a power stroke going down and then also a power stroke going back up. Some of these engines can be constructed as single acting, but for the purposes here, it's going to be double acting. Now you saw this engine run in several other videos so uh, what the teaching aid that I made is really almost exactly like the big one. Well it's the same size even and uh, you know I thought I could make this in an hour but I suppose I spent all day on it. And uh, let's go over the parts now. First of all we got here the, the cylinder and then uh, the green portion here is the piston and then we've got a piston rod here or might call it a connecting rod and the, the crank and the crank pin and uh, now I'm going to take it apart and show you uh, some of the other parts. I'll turn it around backwards first of all and show you that uh, the uh, the actual air or steam enters in a manner like this although on my other engines it's some of this is all internal that is it's ports drilled into the castings now on this little one, I do have uh, external plumbing, but let this side represent the uh, exhaust, that's the red, and the other side represent the uh, intake, the steam or the air, and these are crudely constructed T's, non-functioning, they're just made out of wood, to show you that uh, when we put the air in, or steam, it's available to either the top or the bottom uh, through this tubing or in the case of this engine it's all internal you can't see it. And then the exhaust comes out the other side here into a T and that would be the exhaust. Now those could be uh, separate exhausts too. Like on this one I guess you could say I've got duals so that's kind of irrelevant. However, if it was ste hot steam coming out, you'd want to pipe it away where you know you couldn't get burned by it. So I'm not going to uh, go back. I'm not going to show you this again because this is on the back side. So when we turn it around, you're only going to see uh, <coughs> the green and the red pipes. But now you know where they go. Now I'm going to take the plastic off for just a moment and uh, show you what we got under it. Now on the front side this is the uh, pivot point that the cylinder wobbles on or uh, oscillates on meaning going back and forth. This hole here means nothing. That only proves to you that Tubal Cain can make mistakes too. That was a misdrilled hole. But you can see here that we have uh, the intake right there and right there and then on the other side is the exhaust. I probably should have colored those but I didn't. And when we put the uh, cylinder on there it just wobbles back and forth. Turning this around to the back side you can see a little bit of a reflection there, some holes. The middle one there being the pivoting point. Then, uh, the bottom one here, the bottom of the cylinder we got one and we got a similar hole on the top. Now I'm going to put that back together. By the way I made this out of clear Lexan plastic which uh, cuts and sands and drills are real nice. Something my brother gave me. My brother Jan who lives in Cody, Wyoming. So we'll put that back together now. I've got the camera on a tripod now. Somebody gave me a little uh, lecture on using a tripod. Well, I've had one for a long time, but it, uh, 
it's hard to be your own cameraman and a lecturer, I guess, or I know, uh, because sometimes I need to move it around, but I think I'm zeroed in on what I want now, and uh, I'm going to turn this back and forth a few times, or up and down, whatever you want to call it, and uh, you can see that the cylinder wobbles or oscillates, and as it does, watch the ports there at the top, how they move from one side to the other, and of course the same thing is happening on the bottom. It may not be as easy to see because we've got that piston rod in the way, so we'll talk mainly about the top part, but uh, in uh, this position here, when uh, air goes in here, it's coming out of this top hole here and it's pushing down on the piston. And as the piston goes down, the cylinder starts straightening up and seals that off. So for a moment, we don't have any pressure in there. And then at the same time, any air that was on this side is uh, coming out with the ports that line up there and it comes out of the exhaust. And as this moves over to the other side, the bottom uh, steam ports are aligned and we now have pressure in here and it's pushing up on the piston and the exhaust is going out at the same time. When it swivels we have steamer air entering again and the cycle continues. And these can really run fast too. You know I've got my other one running pretty slow, that big one, but you can really run these at a very high speed depending on your pressure of steam or air. I hope this is uh, clear to you, uh, what I'm trying to explain. This is uh, sometimes called the stuffing box or packing box, where we have a packing in there to prevent uh, pressure from escaping down here. Uh, in my particular one, I don't have any packing, but I do have, uh, I just have a real close fit in the actual uh, model over here. Now the black here represents the cylinder walls and the uh, this is the top head, cylinder head, and then this is the bottom of the cylinder with that stuffing box. Someone asked me uh, if these engines are self-starting. They are self-starting if the crank is in the position, uh, the cross position. For instance, anywhere between here in here, when the air enters in there, it's going to start. Now, if you're at top dead center and you put uh, your air or steam in there, it's not, nothing's going to happen. It's at a dead, uh, it's dead headed. Similarly, if it's on this side, any place in here, it's going to start. So, no telling where this thing stops, you know, when you're running it, but it may or may not be in a position to self start. Now, if it was a four cylinder engine, or a, a two-cylinder engine, we could fix it such that there would be no dead spots. Similarly, a large steam, steam locomotive is set up, uh, you know, there's one cylinder on each side, such that it, there never would be a dead spot or they would never get the thing moving again. With these smaller engines, if you just spin the flywheel a little bit, you know, away they go. Someone criticized my double knobs here for uh, tightening the cylinder. So I guess I'll have to change that, do something else with it. Perhaps it is ugly and out of proportion. Um, you saw this run in my other videos. If you didn't see my other videos, there are ten videos showing how I built this thing and there's another six videos showing how I made the uh, patterns for the, the cylinder. So go back and watch those if you haven't uh, looked at those and some people have found them to be uh, interesting they tell me and uh, I'm going to be on my summer hiatus now as the hot weather sets in won't spend so much time in my indoors and I hope you got something out of this thing because now I guess it's destined for the scrap bin having served its hour in the spotlight and uh, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now and have a good summer.